What I want to do for this morning for our message is take you on a little tour through some history. What I want to look at is both some biblical history as well as some of our own church history. And what I hope to do is just exactly what that song speaks about, to encourage you, to encourage you and to encourage me and to remind us that just as God was faithful then, he is faithful now. Think of the lyrics in the chorus of the song that we just sang a moment ago. It says, you make mountains move, you make giants fall. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls. I will speak to my fear and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then and you'll be faithful now. And so I hope by looking at some of these things from both the Old Testament, the New Testament, and our own history, um, that we will be able to do just exactly what this song mentions that we will be able to speak to our fears and preach to our doubts, reminding ourselves, both individually and as a church, as a congregation, that God was faithful then and he will be faithful now. And so we're going to take a quick tour through about uh, about 3,000 or so years of history, Um, a good chunk of it from the Old Testament and from the New Testament, and then a few years from our own history history. And so I'm always excited when I get to talk about this stuff. And we'll see at the end just how excited each of you are as well. (laughs) The history of the world, the history of the universe, I think can rightly be called his story. And we often, I think, probably heard that anytime you've heard something about history, breaking it down into his story, history. We only have history because God decided to create. God spoke and it was. And the history of the world is the amazing story of God's faithfulness. The history of all of the world is an amazing story of God's faithfulness. The history of our own church is also the story of God's own faithfulness. God promises, he makes promises, and then he fulfills them. And we see God, and don't miss this point, which I hope also will run through what I'm going to say here this morning, that God's faithfulness works through faithful and willing people. And through that, God does amazing things. So on Wednesday nights at GLOW, right now we're currently following what's called the Gospel Project, and we're in the Old Testament. Right now, we, uh, we just finished, actually, going through the book of Genesis, and now we've just entered into the book of Exodus. All throughout these books, we see God being faithful. The one God of the universe being faithful. We see him creating. Very first book of the Bible, early part of Genesis, God creating. Then we see God calling people to be his one true people. And then we see God rescuing people and caring for his people through the ups and downs that they face. Many of the issues, of course, being of their own doing. Every time I think of the Old Testament, the early part of the book of Genesis and the story of of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I think of my New Testament professor who said that when you look at the Old Testament, what you see is not a story of perfect people that God works through doing amazing things, but in his words, you see stories about a bunch of scoundrels that God worked through nonetheless. And I love that, right? They make some very unwise decisions They do some things that maybe we think, man, I would never do that. But nonetheless, we read these stories and we're reminded that God worked through imperfect people in the past and he can work through us, imperfect people in the present. So God calls Abraham, Abram at the time, and promises to make him into a great nation. And then he says to him that the whole world would be blessed through him. Then against terrible odds, Abraham and Sarah conceive a child and the line continues. Even though they were thinking, how is my line going to continue? How are we going to bless the whole world through us if my family line is going to end um, when I die and when my wife dies? But God made a promise and he fulfilled it. He was faithful and he gave to them a son, Isaac. And then we read about Isaac and then we read about Jacob And then a little bit on the book of Genesis, and we just finished this account at Glow uh, very recently, we learn all about Joseph. We see the story of Joseph that through unwise actions, terrible circumstances, that God is faithful. He sustains Joseph, and he rescues many people, including his people, through Joseph. 
saves many, many people during the time of a terrible famine. God is faithful. The Israelites next find themselves about 400 or so years later in Egypt in slavery. Once again, we see God's faithfulness. Even though Moses didn't want to go, God calls him and does amazing things like speaking to him from a burning bush that wasn't burning up. And we we make much of that when we're talking and teaching this at Glow, that there was a bush that was burning, it was on fire, but no ashes were falling to the ground. This thing was not burning up. And even in the midst of all this, Moses seems to have not wanted to go. But nonetheless, God calls Moses, his brother Aaron, and he sends them to Pharaoh. And through amazing acts of power, he delivers his people from slavery in Egypt. And this, of course, is that great salvific act of the Old Testament. We notice here again that God is faithful. This one God is faithful, and he works through imperfect people. Jump ahead and we find ourselves in the book of Joshua, where God is actually fulfilling a promise of giving the land of Canaan to his people. Think simply, I just read this the other day in my own personal devotions, just think of the account of the fall of Jericho, of how God sends his people, the warriors, to march around this city one time every day for six days and then seven times on the seventh day. And what happens? Well, the walls come tumbling down and the city is overthrown. And we see amazing things like this happening over and over again in the book of Joshua as God is fulfilling a promise that he made to his people to give them a land of their own. God is faithful and he works through willing and faithful servants. And then picking up just in the song that we sang a moment ago, we have the account of David and Goliath. David, this small shepherd boy who would be the future king, by no means, as we all know, as we all well know, a perfect person. By no means was he perfect. But God's faithfulness met a willing servant, and through David, God did amazing things, like literally making a giant fall. Our God is faithful. As the author of Hebrews puts it, what more shall we say? I do not have time to tell. And then he lists all these names and I'll list some of them for you. We don't have time to go through all the other accounts of God's faithfulness in the Old Testament. Like how he worked through Gideon, how he worked through Daniel, how he worked through Ezra and Nehemiah. And we could read all of the prophets as well. And we could go on and on about God's faithfulness in the Old Testament. Our God is faithful. If he says it, then he does it. And his work is carried out not by perfect individuals, but people like you and me. People who are not perfect, but are willing in faith to step out in trust in their faithful God. All throughout the Old Testament, we see God making promises. And we see in the Old Testament that one day this king would come, that a king, a special king would come, one whose heel would crush the serpent's head, One who would be like the prophet Moses. One who would be a king in the line of David. And one who would be a suffering servant like we read about in Isaiah 53. And when we turn to the pages to the New Testament, we see a baby boy who is laying in a manger. And we see this boy, Jesus, going on to live a perfect life, to die a perfect death to be raised to life on the third day, to ascend into heaven where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. We see the ultimate salvific act of human history and a great demonstration of God's faithfulness. Our God is faithful. He said he would do it and he did it. And then as we keep reading in the New Testament, we see the amazing power of the Spirit We see in the New Testament pages that this ragtag group of disciples goes from scattering when the shepherd is struck to preaching and proclaiming the good news of the gospel and gathering people from every tribe, tongue, and nation into the kingdom of God. Take just one example, the apostle Peter. He goes from the denier of Jesus saying, I I don't know the man, to a powerful preacher and an early leader in the church of Christ. God is faithful and he works through faithful people. Imperfect, but yet faithful people. And lastly, again, picking up from the song that we sang, we see the account of Paul and Silas. As we keep reading in the Old Testament, in the New Testament rather, we see Paul and Silas. 
that they're in Philippi and they're in prison. And then at midnight, we are told that even in prison, think about that scene for a second. What are they doing in prison? Well, they're singing songs of praise and they're praying. And what happens? God, by his might, shakes the very foundations of the prison and the doors fly open. Amazing. And they could have just scattered. They could have ran and left, but they didn't. Oddly enough, they stayed there. They stayed put. And as this jailer was about to run himself through because he knew the penalty for letting the prisoners escape was death, he was going to beat them to the punch and do it. But then Paul and Silas yell out, don't kill yourself. We're all here. And isn't that amazing? What, what does this jailer say next? Well, he asks, what must I do to be saved? Through the actions of Paul and Silas and through the amazing might and work of our God, this man and his household are saved by the good news of the gospel. Paul takes the opportunity to proclaim the gospel to him. And he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. He believes in the gospel. And this gospel that changes hearts and minds and changes lives is the same gospel that we cling to today. It's the same message that we must proclaim today. That God, who we are accountable to, sent his son Jesus who died on a cross for you and me, and that we are called to respond to this good news. And all those who do have life, everlasting life in his name. We are called, just as Paul and Silas were, to proclaim this good news through both our words and through our deeds. And I think that we will find, as we have and as Paul and Silas have, that God is faithful. Our God is faithful. And my friends, our faithful God who we see doing amazing and faithful things all throughout the pages of Scripture, of course, did not stop acting when the last page of the New Testament was written. But his work and his faithfulness continue. It continued all through history, and it continues now. All throughout the years of the church, God continued to demonstrate his faithfulness. And he demonstrated it right here in our own neck of the woods back in 1828 with the founding of what is now called the Berwick Baptist Church. If you've never read this little book, um, we have copies here. I encourage you to grab a hold of it and read it. It's an amazing testimony to how God has continued to work over these last 194 years right here in our own history, in our own neck of the woods. Let me tell you a few things I picked up from this little booklet. When many people would travel from this neck of the woods up to a church that's called First Cornwallis Baptist Church, a church that still exists to this day, and my friend Stephen Wheaton actually pastors that church to this day, they would travel all the way there to worship on Sundays. But in faith, this church, the mother church, First Cornwallis Baptist Church, decided that there needed to be a church down here. And so they released Get a load of that. They released 50 of their members and their church clerk, William Chipman, who had been licensed to pre- preach to start a new church that would go on to be called Berwick Baptist Church. At the time, it was, of course, Second Cornwallis Baptist Church. And our church was born. They had a pastor and they had 50 members and they wanted to get on and do the work that God was calling them to right here in our own neck of the woods. And God was faithful. This faithful group under the leadership of now elder or pastor Chipman continued on and did what God was calling them to do right here in this place. Many people came to faith and were baptized because of these members and their pastor and the amazing work that God did through them. People came to faith, people were baptized, and new churches were planted. Many churches that exist to this very day. William Chipman, you can see his photo on the wall in the foyer down the stairs, served this this one church for 30 years as their pastor. And he witnessed conversions and baptisms to the tune of 428 persons. The church itself grew from those original 50 members by the end of his ministry to 352 members. God is faithful. This young congregation eventually seen the need for a meeting house in Berwick. As populations were shifting and changing, they believed a meeting house needed to be built here in Berwick because at the time they were down in Pleasant Valley. And so in 1858, this meeting house that we are standing in today was erected and the doors were opened for worship here 
in Berwick. This church saw a need as the years went on, about every 50 years, to actually extend the building, to put parts underneath of it, to build back and to build back, ending with the Chipman Annex that we're going to enjoy coffee in when uh, we are finished here this morning. They felt that God was calling them to these things, and so they stepped out in faith, using their money, building on to this building. And God was faithful as the work continued as this church grew. And I mentioned church planting, that this church was a church plant of First Cornwallis. Well, our church also got into the church planting business. The churches that this congregation either directly were involved in seeing come about or had some hand in helping um, in the early years of their existence include the following. Get a load of this. Burlington Baptist Church, then known as Long Point. The, the area was known as Long Point. They were involved in sending members to Aylesford Baptist Church, to Black Rock Baptist Church, to Cambridge Baptist Church, and to Waterville Baptist Church, and perhaps others as well. God is faithful. And as we read on in this little book, we read about another pastor, Pastor Isaiah Wallace, called the Evangelist, who served this church from 1874 to 1877. And we are told that he added, and the other members as well, added 178 people to the church's membership, 165 of them through baptism. Amazing. And in his lifetime, he himself baptized 330 precious souls. And as we read on, we read about Pastor Black. And I include this because amazing things happened, but the numbers aren't so, as, aren't so impressive. And so I include this deliberately. He was known as the scholar who served this church after Wallace from 1877 to 1880. And during his three years in the pastorate, there was nine baptisms. But we are told that the church grew in power. God is faithful. And my friends, time does not permit us to talk more about the other pastors and all of the many members that have served this this church faithfully throughout the last 194 years. But what I can tell you is that through it all, God has been faithful. And what I hope I've done by looking at pages of scripture and pages of our own history is to encourage you, to encourage me, to remind you and to remind me that God is faithful, that God was faithful in the past and that we can trust him to be faithful in the present because this is the same God that we worship. Our God does not change. As scripture says, Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God was faithful in the past, and you can count on the fact that he is faithful now. And don't forget this, that our God works through faithful people. It's not as if I want to remind you that God is faithful so we can sit back and just not do much and just trust that God will be faithful. If he wants a church here, if he wants more people, then just leave it to him. Well, that's not the story of Scripture, and that is not the story of our history. Our history in Scripture tells us that God's faithfulness works through faithful people. Not perfect people, but imperfect people and sinful people like you and me who stepped out in faith, trusting in a faithful God, and amazing things happened. Yes, I know, you might be thinking, well, the times are different, and excuses could abound, and they could abound. But what I want you to remember is even in the midst of all of the things that we face in this present day and age, 2022, that our God does not change, that he was faithful then and he is faithful now. And so by way of conclusion, I have one question I want us to think about, to think about individually, but also as a church. And it's this, what kind of history do we want future generations to write about us? If some, some young pastor 100 years down the road is doing a sermon like this this morning, what will he say about us? I want us to know that even in the midst of our struggles and our failings and our difficulties, the struggles of the times, that God is faithful and that God's faithfulness works through faithful people who step out in faith and trust in an amazing God. And we can be sure if we do that, that amazing things will happen. May it be so with us. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this day you've given to us. God, it's so good that we can be here together in this space. This space that has stood here, at least this sanctuary space, 
since 1858. God, it's so good that we can be here together in this space, still lifting up our praise and our worship to you. God, help each of us to be encouraged by the fact that you are a faithful God, that you were faithful in the past, and we can count on the fact that you are faithful now and that you will be faithful right into the future. And so God, help us in faith to step out and to trust you because God, we want to be used by you in the present for you to do amazing things here now. And so God, we ask that you would just encourage us, that you would strengthen our faith and you would help us to trust in you. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.